Hello and welcome to our second lesson in the study of mathematical biology. So, in our previous video, we talked about the SIR model. In this video, we'll be talking about the analytic solution of the SIR model without vital dynamics. Okay, so from our previous video, we got to know these three equations here, all right? Where we derive these three. So we have these three um, differential equations subject to initial conditions. So now let's get our initial conditions. So S at zero is S naught, and we said this is always greater than zero because at the start of the epidemic, the entire population, almost the entire population or the entire population is susceptible. In I of zero, which is I naught, is also greater than zero because the epidemic gets started because there are people who are infected. Then we said at the start of the epidemic, mostly no one has recovered, so R of zero is zero, okay? So from this, we have to find the analytic solution for our S at T, I at T, and R at T. So S at T is at any time, which number of people will be susceptible? I of T, those who will be infected at any time, and R of T, those who will be recovered who will recover or those who will remain. So now, let's find the number of infectives at any time t, okay? So what we do is that we take equation two and equation one, so then we divide them. So it is equation two divided by equation one, okay? So that is what we have here, okay? So from here, dt and dt cancels. So we get di ds, then we expand what we have here. That gives us beta SI minus beta SI minus what we have here. So this cancels this, and we have negative one here, and this I cancels this I. So that means the resulting equation gives us this. Okay, so when we have this, we can then multiply through by the S. So here by the S and here by the S. So this cancels this. And this gives us the I equals what we have here. Okay. So now we have to integrate both sides in order to find I of T. So integrating both sides, we will have I of T will be equal to negative S at T because we are integrating with respect to S then x the function of t, okay? Then plus gamma over beta ln. So when we integrate one over s, we get what? Ln of what? S minus the function of what? T. So that's what we can find here. Then this c is a constant, okay, of integration. So when we get here, then we let rho be gamma over beta. And this rho stands for relative recovery rates, okay? So that means wherever we find gamma over beta, we replace that with rho. So we are going to have I of T minus S at T plus rho, so we are in place of gamma over beta. Then we have this, okay? But we know that um, we want to find for our C, our constant. But you know that the initial condition is i of zero equals i naught and s of zero equals s naught. So making substitution into this, okay, will give us i of zero minus s at zero plus real ln s of zero plus c, where i of zero is the same as i naught, s of zero is s naught, then plus real ln s naught plus c. So we are finding for C, so we make C the subject. So this gives us C equals I naught plus S naught minus real ln S naught, okay? 
we call this equation 5. Then we substitute this into this. Equation 4. Okay. So making a substitution, you are going to get I of T minus SRT plus real ln SRT plus. So wherever you find C, we put this there in place of C. Okay. So when you do rearrangement, this will give you I of T will be equal to I naught plus S naught minus SRT plus real ln. So we have this here and this here. So logarithm subtracting. So we divide them. So real ln SRT over S naught. Okay. So this happens to be the relation, the formula we can use to find the number of infectives at any time t. So this equation, we can decide to even simplify it down, okay? So we know that one thing Kermak and McKendrick did way, they was they divided the population into three classes. So we had those who were susceptible, infectives, and the recovered. So that was the total population. So at the start of the epidemic, at time t equals 0, n was equal to s naught plus i naught plus r of 0. But we know that s of 0 is equal to s naught, which is always greater than 0. i of 0 equals i naught, which is always greater than 0. But r of 0 equals what? 0. So that means n is equal to s naught plus i naught plus 0. Then finally, we can write n equals s naught plus i naught. So that means in place of i naught plus s naught here, we can replace it with what n. So doing that gives us this here. All right. So we can also use this equation to find the number of infectives at any time t. Then sometimes we also try to work around this by taking limit true. So we take limit as t approaches infinity. So when we do that, limit as t approaches infinity of s at t will be equal to um, s infinity, OK? So that means wherever we find s at t, we put s at infinity there. And that can also give us this, OK? so. You could see that we found the number of infectives, the equation for it, in three different ways. So you can see any of them in the test book. Any of them is right, OK? So now let's find for I max. So with the I max, we want to know the maximum number of what? Infection, OK? So maximum number of infection. So this here happens to be our sketch. OK, so this is those who are susceptible. This, those who recover, this, those who become infected. So you can see that the, we can see the maximum is here, right? So that means we want to know the maximum what number of what infectives. So the maximum occurs at a point where the derivative is 0. That's the i dt is 0. And at the point where our s is equal to our real, that's s equal to gamma over beta, which is the same as real. So what we do is that we just substitute that into i of t. So when we do that substitution, we have, so recall that this is i of t, OK? So making that substitution, we have i max to be equal to i naught plus s naught minus wherever you find s naught, we put real day, sorry, wherever you find s at t, you put real day, then plus real lane, so s at t, you put real day, then all over s naught. And this happens to be the formula for I max. But we just show that at the start of the epidemic, I naught plus s naught is equal to n, right? So that means that I mass is equal to n minus real plus real lane real over s naught. And this happens to be the equation for computing I max. All right.
So now let's go to finding SRT. So the number of susceptibles at any time t. So recall that these are the three equations that we derived in our first video. So in this, what we do is that we do we divide equation one by three. Okay, so it is equation one over equation three. And that gives us what we can see here. So the T cancels the T. And we have the S over the R equals what we have here. Because I also cancels I. So when we come here, then it's the S, the R equals minus beta over gamma times what X. OK, and we can use separam, the separation method to solve this differential equation, okay? So since we have the S here, we bring S here. So we divide through by X and multiply through by the R, okay? And that gives us the S over S equals minus B over gamma the R, okay? So this is the same as one over S times the X equals minus B over gamma what the R. So when we do this integration, we are going to get ln SRT because the integral of 1 over S is what? Ln S. But it is SRT because X is a function of T. So minus B2 over gamma times R because of the dr here. Then plus C, our constant of integration. So but we know gamma over beta is equal to what's real the relative recovery rate. So that means B2 over gamma will be the reciprocal of the word real, which is what we can find here. So that means we can make substitution here. Whenever we find B2 over gamma, we replace it with one over real. So doing that substitution gives us ln S at T will be equal to negative R at T. R is a function of T of our real plus word C. So now I want to find our constant of integration C. So we know that at T equals zero, S as zero equals S naught, but R as zero equals what zero. So we make that substitution and we have ln S naught minus r of zero plus real plus c. But r of zero equals zero. So this will give us ln s not to be equal to zero over real plus c. In fact, this will give us c will be equal to ln s not. So we name this equation seven. So we come back to put equation seven into equation six. So that will give us ln s at t will be equal to negative r of t over real plus ln S naught in place of the C. So we can bring this one to the left side. And we have ln S at T minus ln S naught to be equals negative R of T over real, right? Then using lots of logarithm, so this device, and we have ln S at T over S naught, which is equals negative R of T over what real. So we take the exponential on both sides and that gives us SRT. So we take the lane away. We have SRT over S naught, then E minus R of T over real, right? So you can just de decide to multiply through by S naught. Just cancel this. And you finally have SRT equals S naught E minus R of T over what real, okay? And this happens to be the relation or the formula for finding the number of susceptibles at any time t. Okay, so the third thing that we find is we find r of t. And with r of t, it becomes very difficult to go through the procedure to solve it. So we do some approximations, okay? So finding r of t is going to give you this relation here, where alpha is given by this, 
and phi is given by that. Okay, so this happens to be all for lesson two. So we learned how to find the analytic solution to the differential equations arising from the SIR model without vital dynamics. We find I of T, I max, S at T, and we wrote down the formula for R at T. So in our next video, we'll talk about the basic reproductive number, R0. So thank you very much.